Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And today we're going to be painting our owl. And uh, for those of you that um, haven't seen the owl, this is only a first fire. And I wanted you to be able to see the first fire because it's, it's kind of important that you see that it really does need a second fire. We're going to be using a number of different brushes today, but mostly we're going to be using brushes that are what we call filberts. And if you don't have a filbert, don't panic. And I bought these filberts at, um, let's see, where did I get them? I got them at uh, Dick Blick, and um, it's an art supply shop, and, and they're pretty good. They work real well for me. I have three sizes. I have uh, uh, a medium, a small, and I also have a large, and this is the one that really got me going. What it suggests is that uh, uh, you find a small brush, like a two, to use for this, or even up to a four. This is a four that I have. This is about the right size, so um, let's compare it to... Here's a six, and here's a four. See, it's really small, and I think maybe it would be considered a two in a lot of places. So you can, you can use that, because you're gonna need something to put the feathers on his crown. You're also gonna need like a, a very detailed brush. We won't use that very much. A pointer will help you if you have a pointer. Um, and you're gonna need your Pico Pay, uh, which is this. This is a Pico Pay eraser if you have one, if not, get your other erasers out. The other thing I need to tell you is don't use a Sharpie on this. If you trace it and you just get the red tracing, leave that or black tracing or whatever. I'm using a Sharpie on this so you can see it, but the Sharpie's going to get in your way. And if you have just the, the um, transfer paper um, on there, as you paint, you can move that out of your way so that you can go outside the lines and uh, it won't bother you. But when you have a Sharpie that you're using, if you go outside the lines, the line is still there and it makes it kind of difficult. So that's uh, something that's important. I'm going to be using what I would typically call a fur brush, but in this case, I'm gonna say a feather brush. I'm not using my traditional fur brush. I'm using this kind of brush, which is more of a rake for him because I really need separation in the feathers. So I'll hold it in front of my face so you can easily see. Um, and I found that again at Dick Blick's because Dick Blick's is close to my house and it's always easy for me to get there. Uh, okay, colors for today. We're gonna be using a black, of course, and a lot of black. So, you know, don't clean your turpentine or your brush cleaner because it's just gonna get filthy. Um, yellow brown. And this is whatever gray you can find that's a light gray. You want like a silver gray, Copenhagen gray, any gray like that, or mix your own from black and white. Um, this is orange. Now, um, I'm using yellow, brown, and orange together around his eyes. And um, I'm sorry, yellow, brown is up here. Yellow, brown, and orange together uh, because of his eyes. So if the orange fires out a little, it's fine. So use whatever orange you have. The next one is transparency which I like, but it's also a uh, portrait color. So if you don't have it, you can also just use the yellow. Um, you're gonna need a, more of a yellow there then, like a mixing yellow. And the final thing is warm brown gray. And if you don't have warm brown gray, um, I would say just uh, use, a, um, maybe a, mix an ivory with a medium gr uh, brown because you kind of need it as the base color behind his crown and some of the feathers on the side of his face. But I actually did start with the eyes first because they always say start with the eyes first. So that is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to take just a, a regular small brush. This is a, a six. Wait, I think I have a four. Do I have a four? Oh, eight, okay. So this is a six and I'm, I'm using a semi-open medium. I'm using the one that Randy uh, gave me the recipe for that's half um, half light copaiba and half mineral oil. So I, I really like it. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is put the color around his eyes. So I'm going to turn it to face me so I can do that. And I'm just going to put the color in here around his eyes. If you go over up into this area, that's fine because it's going to be black. 
and certainly your transparency is not going to show. So if you have to go over, go over up into that area if your brush is too big or something because um, put it on um, solid and put it on uh, fairly dark because we're going to have to put a little bit of shading over it at one point, and, uh, as you will see, and this will help. And we're going to do it on both eyes. And this is a good study in feathers because I looked at a full owl and it's amazing. It's almost like they wear armor. If you look at some, especially the horned owls, uh, which is this one. This is a horned owl uh, because, and it's very intricate. Okay, now I'm going to do his eyes. And this is always the most important part. Um, I know you may not have some of these brushes that I have, and that's fine. You can use, this is the equivalent of like a, a two, maybe, or a four. I'm going to dip it in black, solid black. Mine is a rounded brush, as you can see. And so I'm just going to put it in here, because I know it's going to give me a nice, deep black. Ah, I'm having some trouble with this brush being a little too stiff. You know, when you use turpentine like I do, it really stiffens your brushes. And even though I leave them in oil afterwards, you know, I put them in the oil to try to help it, it doesn't always help. Oops. Ah. When that happens, see how I went outside there? I don't even know if you can tell. I'm just going to use my, my stump, and it usually works pretty well. Now, if you see a natural light coming in the eye, leave it. Don't cover it up because it's harder to do if you cover it up. I almost see a natural light forming there. Um... We'll have to see. I'll put the other eye in and see if I like it or not. And if not, then I'll do something different. Now, I'm just sort of tapping my brush around the circle because it's a round brush and it's good for that. And I'm sort of tapping it across the top. And then I keep loading. I'm loading frequently. Every time I leave, I'm loading. Um, this is black. It will chip off if you get too... Um, ambitious with the amount that you put on your brush. So you do have to watch that. And you're just gonna go around his, his little eye and do the best you can. Now, I found with the eyes in these guys, these big eyes like this, that if you made them more um, elliptical, kind of, and let me show you what I mean here. I had them over on this guy over here that I did the first time, and I made it a little more elliptical, sort of more this way, coming down that way. And I think it helped. I don't like these eyes, so I'm just going to go over them, and I'm going to put my own in. Okay. So this guy's going to be here. And this guy's going to be here. Just touch. You don't have to do too much. I think I like that. Okay, eyes are done. Oh, I missed, uh, on this I just realized, I missed an important area. Let me just draw it in because otherwise I'm gonna have a problem. I missed that there's another white area under their eyes, like right about there. And on this one, it's like right about here, oops, here. I can move it forward, that's fine. Um, yeah, like that. So that should be white. So I have to have that marked out, otherwise I'm going to have a problem there. Okay, 
And now we're going to go and do this part. This part is the hardest, I think, on the whole thing. I'm going to start with my large um, brush. Um, like if you have a 10, something like that, that would be good. I have to get this softened up a little here. There we go. And I'm going to take my warm brown gray and just lightly, very lightly. Oops. And I say that as I put on a huge chunk. You want to put this on very lightly. Now, there is a section here where it is yellow underneath and that warm brown gray. Let me see, is that on the... Nope, it's not on the drawing. So, as you're doing this, this side I'm doing correctly. Leave a section for the white. I mean the yellow to go, yellow brown to go underneath. And then on this side, I'll just take the side of this and sort of get it back. And it goes up into here. So, okay. I get it out of there because it doesn't need to be there. Okay. And now I'm just going to go back in and sort of get the color in the way I want it. Okay. All right. Then comes the hard part. You actually have to put in the um, the feathers, and this is not easy. And so I have a little tiny, well, not tiny, but I have a little. Uh, this is a a, um, a filbert, and what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to just dip the tip, tip only, in my paint. And I'm just going to touch. Push, push, push. And when you load it, you just tap the edge. You don't need more than that, okay? Now, what you want to do is you want to start. And I started with this little guy at the top. It's almost like a little circle. And I pushed, pushed, pushed. Hang on. Pushed. Just tap. Oop, not quite that high. Don't need it that high. There. And then I need it here, 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 here. And then in here, they go around in a circle. So I'm going to do it. Wipe it off a little if you think it's too dark. Okay. Hmm. Now, I'm going to do this here. And now, I'm going to start going from the bottom up. So, oh, I have this little thing here, which is kind of weird, but I'm just going to ignore that. And I'm going to start going from the bottom up. And here you could do it from the middle. Now it go it fans out from the middle. And you just keep going up and up. Oops. You want it? Push, 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 and cover over that area there. 
Now see what I mean about the um, area here? Um, you can see how having that um, the Sharpie on here. You see how it's underneath there? And it's very distracting when you have it like that. Okay. So we've got most of that in. And I might want to make it a little bit darker here and there. Okay. And then I'm going to take, I have a I have my feather brush here, that new feather brush that I'm trying out. And I'm gonna take a little black, put on that, and do a little up in here. And you wanna make, there are a few patches where he has a little bit of dark up in here. And I'm gonna just add a little dark, yeah. do this a little differently. It didn't quite show up the way I wanted it to. But I can't tell because I've got the... That's that's the definite problem with the having that... The Sharpie there. Okay. I still want a little more dark up in here. And see, you're going to have to play. It's not, it's not that easy. You're going to have to play a little bit with this. Oops, let me get a little darker. There we go. Okay. Okay, that's a little more looking like fur. Okay, now we're going to take and we're going to paint the, um, the yellow brown under this fur here. Using the side of my brush because I just want to get it in without disturbing this area. So I'm using the side of my brush. I'm going to bring it all the way down to here, and it looks like it goes up a little here. Okay, let me do this. Yeah, this is a horned owl, so if you want to get pictures of a horned owl to work from to help you with this, um, that's fine, or uh, the study will be available if you wait. Um, you can get the study, so whatever you want to do. Okay, this I'm going to use a really tiny brush for. This area here, let me show you what it looks like. It looks like this. It looks like this and this. They're next to each other. See that? And then this and this and this and this and this and this. All the way down the line. So, I'm going to start up in this section and I'm going to start doing that. And you want to make sure you have the orientation right for these feathers because it's always important. Now you know why it took me so long to do this, right? And I told you they have like a um like an armor really. And then we'll go over to this side and do the same thing. This is all with black right over the top.
-hmm. These side ones tend to go like that. And then I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to put some yellow brown up in this area. Okay, got it. Yellow brown, here we go. And we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna start here. Want a little more yellow brown. Take a slightly larger brush and just do this. Okay. So that's what we have so far. How much longer is this going to take? Wait, you haven't seen anything yet. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my black and I'm going to do these upper areas here. Need a little more oil. There's an area here, and there's an area here. And then on this side, there's this whole area that's black. It's actually his ear, where his ear would start. But you have to think about this. What color do you put underneath to get the color that's on top? So we're gonna go back and use yellow-brown here. And then we're going to make sure that the yellow brown comes up into the. Okay. And on the other side, it is also yellow brown. My yellow brown's getting a little mucky. Okay. So here's my yellow brown. <clears throat> and on this side, I'm going to put a little bit right between these like this. I'm just touching. I'm not really doing doing a whole big deal here. And then I want to do a little right here. And then I want to just do the yellow brown down the side here. All the way down to here. Leave spaces. Okay. And you want this, the black, to come over it. This is the start of the ear on this side, too. Okay. And now we're going to go underneath his eyes. I'm going to use a square shader. This is a six. And we're going to put the black in through here. So the first thing we do is we're gonna put the black in here and then start bringing it in here. Now, this is the stroke I'm using, like this. Okay? Kind of the side of my brush, keeping it loaded with oil and paint because you wanna make sure that you get this done correctly. Okay, and you're gonna come down and you're gonna come down to this area here, 
And you're going to cover that and go right down over the eye. And over the eye, you're going to just do a little bit of the black there. And just a tad of it here. Just a little bit. More like a shadow than anything. And then there's a little on the top of the eye here. Okay, and we're gonna do this kind of the same thing on the other side. Okay? So over here, we're gonna come down over this part of the eye and give it a little shadow. come down past the fur up here. Or the feathers. Oops. It's not cooperating with me. And of course I'm not looking at it so it's not going the right direction. It should come out this way more. Okay. All right. He's going to have a little bit of shading right here. He's going to have a little bit of shading right here. Okay. You can use a dry brush even to just get that shading in there. Okay. All right. This is the fun part now. You think, okay, it's got to be fun pretty soon because this is a pain. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to do this section in here next. And I really enjoy this section in here. I use my number six. With this bird, if I want black here to go out over everything, I have to do everything first and then put the black on to get it to go out over everything. Let me show you here. So here's, here's the one I did. And you can see that these feathers go over the black, but the black goes over this. Okay, so there's a lot that you have to decide what goes where. We're doing these right now. And those are a little easier to do, but you have to, with these, you have to start. I can start at the top on these and move down, but it's better if you start at the bottom and move up so that each, look, each level covers the one below. So there's a lot of um, a lot of thinking to how you do it, and and every bird is different. This bird is a has pin feathers. Those are totally different than the the feathers in the wing. Put a little black on this. I'm going to turn this kind of upside down, and that's the point where you take. Like if you using the picture of the one that I did on, that I posted, then you're going to want to look at that picture and decide how to do it. This one I'm doing from the bottom up, so that the top feathers are on top. Now watch this. I'm doing it. Oh, I'm. Well, I'm going to do these up here because I just want to get them done. Okay. That way they're done up near the top. Now, I know it goes down this far uh, here. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the bottom and they kinda, they kinda swoop out like that. You need to add a little more black to them. This brush is too small. So scratch that. I said it was a six. I think it's an eight that I used. Is that that brush is too small, okay. And you're just letting it skip across the tile and leave the white marks and the dark marks as it needs to. You're side loading your brush and you're just letting it skip. It might make it dark, it might make it light, but you don't, you, you want it to be, you want it to look kind of feathery. So these are a different kind of feather, okay? That's how he looks there. 
Now these are a little too light and you'll see I'm going to go back with my Pico Pay and take care of that. This side comes up to here. So I'm marking it and it goes to about here, okay? So I'm just doing this section up in here because I don't want to have it go awry because it's it feathers out a certain way from there. Okay, I need more oil. Okay, now we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna go like this, right over that line. See, that's why I said these lines are gonna bother you if you use the um, if you use the Sharpie because the Sharpie's going to give you a lot of trouble down there if you use it. It doesn't move out of your way. Here, I want it darker because it's kind of a shadow. Good. If you want it darker, you go towards the top. If you want it lighter, you go towards the back of the brush and then you build up from the base, fanning it out as you go. So it's fanning. Oops, there. You can flip your brush over the other side if you half-loaded it or side-loaded it. Should not have any black paint on it and it should help you clear any areas where you think you've got too much paint. You have to have the dark underneath to get the light on top. So if you want it lighter than this on top, you have to have a dark underneath. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, this is what we have so far. Can you see him looking at you? Okay, now I'm going to do, start putting the white in where it needs to be a little more white. I just did my brush in turpentine, but if you don't have turpentine, it may not work for you. So know your know what you use and whether or not it will work. Plus you don't want it all to be, let's see, on this side I want it to be more a little a lot lighter, okay. You can't make something light if you don't have a dark underneath. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to my Pico Pay. I'm using more of the side of it than the top of it. And I'll go back with my brush. Is this the right brush? Yes, I think it is. Wipe off the color and just soften those lines that I got. And then add some on top. And then up here I have to add some on top too, you can see. Alrighty, here and they need to be softened a little, a little softer there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Alrighty, now this is white here, and this is white here. There's a black line there, but I'm not putting it on until the second fire because I don't want to wreck what I've done so far. Now we're going to do this part. This is a combination of yellow brown and my orange. I'm going to do it very similar to the way we did this and we're going to try to get the texture because on the next um, paint that we do it's going to have less texture. We're going to go over it with a smooth coat and the texture will already be there. So I'm fully loading with yellow brown, here we go, fully loading with yellow brown. Don't go into the thing, pull it from the bottom, and here you pull it from the side, and you want about a half. If you know your, um, your orange fires out, then you're gonna have to do something about that and make sure that you put enough orange on so that it shows, okay? And this is gonna be tedious, I'm sure. Now, this is as far as we're gonna get. 
And then we're going to finish the rest of them next week. Now, you're going to turn here, and these guys are going to come into here. Oops. And that means we have to do the black there first so we can put that over. All right. This is simple. We use this guy. This is the new feather brush. It's the little rake that I have. See, it's like a rake. I'm going to put it in the black. And I'm just going to start and do this area. And I'll pull it out all the way down to here. Oops, got to get more black on it. Kind of using the side of it. Oh, come here, you. And then I'm going to go up here. Ah, this brush is giving me a hard time today. Didn't give me a hard time the other day. It's not loading like it did. There we go. Okay, see how that does? So that's for that side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out into the black. Oops, gotta be careful. I may have to start here and go that way. This is very tedious. Very tedious. So take your time and do it right. And if you have a turntable, it's going to help you keep it um, going around the eye the way it should. I'm going to pull this a little bit this way. Ah, better not do that now, huh? Okay. We're going to have to do it with this. Use your Pico Pay. Because if, if it starts dragging the black um, paint in, it's not going to be helping you at all. You want texture because the next one you're going to put... over this is supposed to smooth it out. So you really want it to be textured. And then you even want texture here with these. But you may have to use the Pico Pay for this because at least it doesn't pull the, a lot of the black in. There. Okay, I told you that this was going to be a long involved process and it will be, but I think it's fun and I think it's something you can learn from. Something I learned from. <laughs> okay, so that's one half of his head. Alrighty, pick up those brushes, keep painting, 
and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.